What's up guys, it's Blaze from Funbox here and let's get started with implementing our attack button as well as the targeting system in our game. Now before we continue, I just have to uh, put this out there. I did a couple of test runs to get the timing down for these videos and I have I have no other way to figure this out. So what we're going to do is for this video, we're going to lay down the foundation for all of the stuff that we'll need going forward. But in terms of writing code and in terms of testing it, we'll be able to do the testing towards the end of this section. And we're, the way that we're going to write the code is we'll do it per object because when I did the timing, there's just too much stuff going on. We have to jump between all these different objects that it just takes way too much time. And I do want to keep these videos as short as possible. So in this, in this particular part, we're going to cover just the start uh, and we're going to get our project ready for targeting as well as getting the um, attack menu set up. So in this section, what we're going to do first is we're going to create a new sprite. And this sprite we will use as targeting. You can have yours animated and things like that. What's important is that this sprite will do two things. The first one is it's going to show which unit we're highlighting to be a potential target for our attacking system. And the second thing that it's going to do is it's actually going to act as a collider. Okay, so for me, my sprites are about 64 pixels high and 64 wide. So I'm going to stick to that. You guys can make yours look whatever you, however you want, but mine's going to be fairly simple. So I'm just going to call mine V targeting. And you know what? I'll just jump ahead to afterwards and I'll explain a little bit more. Okay. so. Pretty simple, we have a plain square here, it's just one frame. If you guys want your targeting thing to be animated, that's completely fine, but you'll have to do a little bit of extra work in order for it to actually function and for it to animate, because for us, we're just using a single frame. Um, so yeah, uh, if you are going to have an animated sprite, you might have to do things a little bit different. So now that we have this, we can close that. And what I want you guys to do is go into the P button, not P button, into the O player object. Now for us, we need to assign the collision mask because we need it to actually get the highlighting, the unit highlighting to work. So here, assign your sprite to V targeting. For me, it's V targeting, but whichever collision mask is suitable for your particular object is fine. All right, uh, let's leave that open for now. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up our room editor. Now for our room, you know what? Yeah, let's add in a new layer. And for this instance layer, I am going to use this as the targeting. So I'll call it target UI. And we have the base UI that we created in the last video. If you haven't seen that yet, I suggest you go back and watch that uh, because we do need to have the basic buttons to be in our, in our game. So yeah, all right. So with the next one, I'm just gonna turn this off for a second. We just need the one button in here for now. You can turn that off as well. And so what we're going to do is for the base UI, this button will be the attack button. And this one for the target UI, this will be the cancel button. And just like with the theory video that we just had, we are going to switch between these layers, turning them on and off so that you can only ever see one button at a time. For now, however, let's turn this off and let's work on the base UI here. Uh, double click it and set the variables here. For the label, we want to click this pen icon. And so if we click it and it shows the pen here, it means that it's going to be whatever default value is here. If we click and we get this uh, line, then we can override it and we can put in whatever value here. So obviously for our attack value, uh, attack button, we want to write attack naturally. 
And then of course we don't have a main function yet. So why don't we head over to our workspace and we can close the room for now actually. And then we are going to create a new script. Now for the scripts, I'm gonna call these button. And of course, if you have worked with the scripts before or the new functions, then we know that uh, the script object works differently to how the functions work here. So in function button, what we're going to do is we'll call it the attack button and we'll leave it empty for now. Okay, so it'll just be an empty function. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And for the cancel button, obviously we want to call it cancel. All right, very simple. Like I said, this video will just be the foundation. So we're just getting our game. I hear an ambulance in the background. We are just getting our project set up and ready for the next part because it is going to be very code heavy and I don't want to lose you guys in all the explanations that I will have to do when writing the code, even though we did do a theory video before. All right, that's it for the buttons for now. Let's go over to the manager. The manager, we will need three new events and those are going to be the user events. So the first one, will be here in other and then user events. We need we need user event zero, uh, user event one, and user event two. Okay, so that's all we need to do for the manager. Okay, so just before we finish off this quick little section where we lay things out, what we're going to do is go back into the room editor and with the base UI, Let's go into the variables again. And here we're going to override the main function with the button functions here that we have, right? So we have attack button here. And be careful because what you want to do is get the spelling right, okay? So attack button. And then of course we need the other object layer as well. So we can turn on the target UI so make sure you're working on the correct layer as well. For target UI, we'll do the same thing except for the string, we'll call it obviously cancel. And for the main function, we need the cancel button. Okay, so this looks good for now. That's about 10 or so minutes. I'm going to make the next one. In the next video, what we'll do is we will work, let me just turn this on. So I need you guys to make sure that all your UI layers are on just to start off with. In the next video, what we're going to do is we will do the stuff that we need to do for the unit itself. So we'll hammer out all the code for that. And then, and then we'll work on the manager because we need to work. This one is probably gonna be the longest one, the manager here. And then after that, we'll work on the actual button code itself because while we're not writing too much code here, it is still, it's going to be reliant on everything that we do in the manager. So the actual button functions will have to wait. Anyway, guys, um, I'm gonna get to work on the next one right away. So just hold out for that one. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.